Example 72. Use the binomial table in the appendix of your text to confirm our calculations for the five question multiple choice example above by finding the probability that a person gets three or less questions correct by guessing. Okay, so they want us to basically repeat part of the problem that we did before, but to answer a probability we did not cover in that table. In the table, we did not look at the probability that x was less than or equal to 3. We looked at the probability that it was like equal to 0, equal to 1, equal to 2, equal to 3, all separately. We didn't look for cumulative probabilities like this, where we're saying the probability that it's equal to 3 or less than that value. So this is something different. But basically, what is this saying? It's saying that it's the probability that x is 0 plus the probability that x is 1 plus the probability that x is 2 plus the probability that x is 3, right? That's the same as saying the probability that x is less than or equal to 3. It's the sum of all those different scenarios, scenario where it's equal to 3, equal to 2, equal to 1, or equal to 0, right? That's the scenarios that we're covering. All right, well, we could work those out separately. Each of these is a separate binomial probability formula filled in, right? For the scenario where we have uh, zero successes, one success, two success, three success, you'd have to work them out all separately and then add all the results together. That should take a long time. And what if it, what if it was like less than or equal to 30 and you had you know 50 trials or something? That'd be a lot more work and it would be virtually impossible to do this without some kind of software or table. It would just take too long. So what we're going to use is basically primitive software, a table basically. And the table is going to give us probabilities for the binomial distribution. So here is an example of what the table looks like, and we'll zoom in in a moment and take a look at that, but essentially what this table has is cumulative probabilities on it for the binomial distribution. And the way it works is like most of the tables traditionally work, they're going to give you the sum of some binomial probabilities, like we have here, right? But the way it works is it goes from the number you give it down, right? So they give an example here. They say, hey, if you look up x equals 2, it'll give you 0, 1, and 2 added together, right? So it always goes from the number you give it down to 0. It will not go up. In other words, you can't give it 3 and expect it to do 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. You know, if, if you give it 3, the table assumes you want 3, 2, 1, 0 added together. So it's a cumulative probability where we sum from the number that's given to the table all the way down to you get to 0. And that's how it works. Now, what we're going to do then on the table is we're going to have to identify our traditional variables. So we're going to need to know what n is for the problem. We're going to need to know what x is for the problem, right? In this case, when I say x, we're actually going to be using a special x. x is going to become basically something called c or k, depending on the problem of the table you're working with. For our table, k is going to be the way they call this value. And k essentially is going to be like our starting value. In this case, it's going to be 3. So it's sort of like x. Remember, x was the number of successes. So now we're going to be basically saying, well, hey, 3 here is kind of playing the role of x. But when we put 3 here as k, we mean 3, 2, 1, 0, right? Whereas x, if we put 3 for x, we just meant the case where x is equal to 3. So instead of using x, we're going to use either c or k, depending on your table. In our case, our table has a k value. And what that means is that when you look at our, you know, our table, whether we use the C or K, we're going to actually say, okay, well, if K is 3, we're going to take the probability that X is 3, 2, 1, and 0 and add them all up. What would it be if I let K be equal to 4? It would be 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, add them all up. And then finally, you're going to need P. You're going to need to know the probability of success. So let's think about it for our problem here. The N was 5 trials, right, because we were taking 5 guesses on 5 multiple choice questions, right? The P was one-fifth. There was a one-fifth chance that we would get it correct when we took a guess. So we'll call that 0 0.20 as a decimal. We're going to need that for the table. And then finally, we have a K. In our case, our K is 3, right? That's the number we want to start with and go down to 0 from. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at our table and see if we can find these values to come up with the cumulative probability that we have less than or equal to 3 successes. Okay, so we're zoomed into our binomial table, and remember we have 5 as our n, right? Because there were 5 trials here, 5 guesses being made. We said that our k would be 3 in this problem, so it's going to give us the probability that it's you know 3 added to 2, added to 1, added to 0. And then finally, we need to go over to the appropriate 
p-value, the p-value is on this top row, we had a 20% probability of success. Going down to k equals 3, we see the answer is 0 0.993, 0 0.993. Okay, so it looks like we found the answer 0 0.993. So ultimately the total sum of all these probabilities is 0 0.993, or 99.3% chance. So when we take guesses on a multiple choice uh, quiz with five questions on it, it's very unlikely that we will guess better than three questions correct, right? Because if you add the probabilities that we get none of them right, one of them right, two of them right, or three of them right, it gives us a 99.3% chance. Which, meaning, which means that we only have a 0.7% chance of getting four or five of them correct. And so in that case, uh, we have very small odds of guessing our way to a passing grade on a five-question quiz.